everybody. Put down your crack pipes and beer bongs because you're listening to the Drunken Graveyard Podcast. My name's Robin. I'm Scott. And today we have a special episode that I think is entirely our shit. It's episode 150 because we're gonna get swifty. We got some cold drinks. We got some big anime boobies in our memory from playing Fatal Frame 5 yesterday. Oh. I feel like the ghosts in that would be much scarier if they didn't have such ridiculously stacked tits. I'm going to throw this out here. The Fatal Frame porn should have been based off that fucking game. <laughs> Not the one they based it off of. Because that was... It, it's Yeah, it gets there. It, it's softcore porns. The wetness meter. Um. Yeah, the wet t-shirt contest. I never thought that I would need a game that has a how wet are you meter. Oh, here you are. You could just put that, uh, like the little, like the little water droplet, or, and then it becomes like the lotus flower or whatever when you're fully soaking wet. You could just put that over various parts of porn. Yeah. Yeah. I support that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it would just be like that whole wetness meter, like all over the fatal frame porn that actually exists. But anyways, we're gonna be talking about a couple horror comedy flicks this week. We have a new one, and we have a classic. Very classic. Very classic. One that came out when I was two years old. Okay, so first we're going to be talking about Scare Package. That premiered last night, I think it was June 12th? Yes. On The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. They did another movie alongside of it called Hogzilla. I think that's an older one, or is that a newer one? I th- I'm not sure. I think it was new to streaming was was the big thing. Oh, okay. So yeah. it hasn't had like a streaming release. Okay. I mean, they did that one and then the premiere of Scare Package. Yeah, that's from 20... Hogzilla is from 2014. 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah. So first time streaming. Yeah. Will that be dropping on Shutter? I would... Maybe. I would assume. Okay. That's usually how the last drive-in stuff works, isn't it? Is it's like... Sometimes. Stuff that's... It depends on like when they get like the movie rights though. Yeah. Because that's why some of the stuff you can't see in canada because there's yeah. different rights for the united which this well it's it's all border stuff apparently it's even worse than the uk i could Maybe only imagine less. yeah well and because each country kind of cuts out like little different aspects of movies so some will leave in swearing and some will leave in gore mm-hmm. and some will cut out sex stuff and some will cut it all out entirely and then it becomes like a like a distribution thing where yes yeah. kind of get lost in distribution hell but yeah, so Hogzilla, Scare Package, we're going to be talking about Scare Package. It's coming out this Thursday, June 18th. Uh, multiple directors, it's an anthology, uh, the big framing device, and the final short directed by Aaron B. Kuntz. Cool guy. I recommend following him on Twitter. He's got some, he always talks about cool stuff on there. He's always sharing interesting things. And there was some cool fan art that came out of the last drive-in last night. Yeah, because they have like a people that draw whatever movie they're doing yeah yeah uh there's a guy i think his name's like cody sivey and he was doing some crazy art and it was just um, just wonderful to look at like i i love seeing people get super excited and nerdy about stuff like that anyways so we're gonna pop on another spoiler warning for you guys if you have not seen scare package if you didn't watch it last night on the last drive-in there's going to be some serious spoilers here. We don't want to ruin anything for you uh, if you're going to be checking this out. So if you are going to be checking it out, just come back and check out this episode. And then, you know, skip forward, maybe like 20 minutes, half hour, because we're going to be talking about Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And you don't want to miss that. No. No one wants to miss, like, those gorgeous boobs. Elvira's Haunted Hills, my sexual awakening. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Fucking... It, was, it was for many of us. I think so. And continues so. to be. It's because like, I think that maybe she is a vampire. Uh, yeah, Just she has an age. Yeah, Cassandra Peterson hasn't aged. No, no, because she was 37 in Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Yeah. So she was 37 when I was two years old. And she looks the same now. Like, there's no difference. What a classy woman, too. Oh, yeah. Just, like, I just love her. Like, someone give Shudder, if you're listening, and I know you are, I don't know, give her a show. Please, for the love of God. Right? Someone needs to. Yeah, something for, like, and, uh, like, I think that, like, Elvira, like, appeals to, like, everybody. Like, straight women who want to look like vampires, lesbians who want to touch her boobs and look like vampires, the gays. Dudes who want to touch her boobs. Yeah. Everyone who wants to touch boobs, really. Yeah. 
and like people who appreciate beehive hairdos. That's a large amount of people. Yeah, like people who want to wear daggers on their belts. I really, I really appreciate. Maybe we don't invite the dagger people. Um, yeah. Yeah, check that at the door. It That's the coat check, on the, knife it, check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do a knife check, but it depends on the type of dagger people. Are you like a guy that has like a cool looking like medieval dagger that you bought and you listen to Cradle of Filth too loud in your room and you might also be a brony? Fucking fists full of finger armor. Yeah, wearing a finger armor ring on every finger. At that point, just got a gauntlet. Yeah. Um, I once saw some goth boy porn where the guy was holding his winky and it, he had finger armor on every finger. And I was like, dude, are you jacking off with that? Because you'll pull <laughs> some skin off. Yeah. I thought you were going to say he had finger armor on his penis, which would be hilarious. That's like a Chinese finger trap. Uh, we're not doing that. No. No. That would be like some weird like fetish porn. I think you have to go on OnlyFans for stuff like that. Yeah, I think so. And then you like pay like a big amount of money. You're like, I'll send it to you. You just put it on there. I mean... You can, whatever. You can do whatever you want. I don't yeah. give a shit. There's no kink shaming here. But yeah. So well, that'll be the dagger coat check. If you listen to Cradle of Filth too loud and wear a bunch of finger armor, I guess you can like keep your dagger. Because it's probably not sharp anyway. No, no. It would be like... It's a, definitely a, if, from... Like by dagger, it might just be like a letter opener. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could still do damage with a letter opener, but yeah. it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to talk about Scare Package. So there's a... a, a seven different directors or groups of directors because seven different shorts yeah so there's uh the one that we're going to talk about first is cold open uh, because it 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 cold opens the whole thing <laughs> oh. so the whole point of scare package is that it is like kind of a lampooning and also a send-up of horror where it's taking some of the the cheesy tropes and I would argue all of the cheesy tropes. Yes. and so Every single one of them. Every single trope. Yeah. And poking fun at them while also poking holes in them and celebrating them at the same time. I think, like, it was... It got, like, a chuckle. I was pretty much consistently chuckling through it. Like, it's definitely more of the on-the-comedy bent than straight ahead horror there were some very cool special effects in it yeah i was gonna say like the definitely not scary uh but awesome special effects yeah and some people like horror anthologies just do not work for them i don't know see i i mean everyone's different i really like anthologies because there's less investment yes and if it's not great there's a new one coming in like 10 minutes, unless it's like one of those unevenly lengthed yes. anthologies. Yes. Where you're like, oh, this one's been going on for 40. What's yeah, going and then on? The next one's five minutes. Yeah. And it's just about farts. That's, uh, that's that a was... very specific example. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't called like the, the XYZs of death or anything. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the one, two, threes of life, I think, was the name of it. <laughs> But then they made the rules afterwards that they were like, okay, we can only have one fart one. It's not going to be the fart show. Yeah. But Scare Package, I don't think, has any fart jokes. Um, not that I remember. Not fart-centric shorts. No. And the thing that's also really good with Scare Package, I think, is that it's it's horror and comedy all throughout. You don't have, like, the roller coaster of, like, here's a super serious torture porn one right next to, like, a funny fart one. Yeah. Or right next to a stupid melt one, right next to a suicide mental illness, like, super serious, like, beat you over the head, brutal one. Yes. ABCs of Death was bad for that. This is definitely more like a creep show in that regard where yes. they actually, you know, took some time to pick a theme and... Here's a fucking hot take but for you. But I guess you. ABCs of Death is, like, community submissions, so... Here's anyway. a hot take for you. Yes. And if you don't like it, you can send it right on back, but I'm dropping this. I'm dropping some fucking science here. I think this did what Cabin in the Woods was trying to do better. Ooh, that is spicy. Yeah. Whoa, that's a five-alarm fucking <laughs> wee -oo, take. Wee -oo. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, because it's trying to play yeah, I, with... I can't like, argue it. Trying to play with the tropes... But then just went with every single trope. Aside from, like, uh, you know, Thor, whatever, like, driving his bike into the grid. Yeah. Like cabin in the woods. I don't know. Like, sometimes I think I didn't 
get Cabin in the Woods, but then I realized, oh, like, I watched it multiple times. And I just, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me like it worked for other people. Yeah, it so. really gets some people's dicks hard, and I like that. Yeah, I whatever. get mad even thinking about it. Yeah. I think this one did it better. And I think that, like, having that, like, it's funny kind of all the way through, um, um, kind of, like, winking and nodding and, like, giving you, like, the elbow and the ribs was good, like, thematically. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, too, the just the... I like that there was more voices because I don't particularly like Joss Whedon's voice. Um, so that was a big <laughs> issue for me, obviously, you're, with... You're telling me that I'm dropping five alarm spicy takes and you're insulting... The father Josh of, Whedon? You're insulting Josh Whedon on this podcast. Not that we've ever insulted Josh Whedon ever no, before. No. I mean, you know what? I do like Buffy. Like, the first, like, three or four seasons yeah. of Buffy are fucking tight. That's fine. I just... I think my issue is that everything sounds like him now. So, I just don't like things that sound like him. Yeah. Scare Pack, it didn't. Because it's got a, a lot of people involved. Yeah. And I think the humor was varied throughout but it still managed to like be funny where you had like yeah like people... some was more slapstick some was more a little bit more subtle yes and but so, it was always yeah. present yes I, I definitely think so i liked the cold open start it was directed by emily haggins and it has like your your main character guy and he's like oh, i've been in so many movies and i've opened them up and i've been like the real estate agent selling the haunted house and i've been the like blah 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 i've been this guy and there's like a really funny scene with like a sadako yamamura from the ring ghost yes. like standing in the doorway of the haunted house like juking and jiving and he's like go ju- fuck get out of there yeah trying to yeah, direct like, the like people he's selling the house to do not look yeah he's like don't just fucking go. that's me when i get out of bed and i just stand in the doorway yeah. you're like could you please yeah <laughs> could you stop being creepy yeah and he wants to be like the hero don't we all he wants to be the good guy yeah uh so he goes to like a house where like two girls are like babysitting on halloween eve during a thunderstorm yeah. like every single trope ever and then he tries to help them. Yeah, he, he's trying to pretend to be the friendly neighborhood. The because f- he's originally just there to set the scene and then decides to interject himself. Yes, yeah. And, and his... be like the friendly neighbor and they're immediately suspicious because like, fuck off. Don't come to my door. Yeah, because he's like, hello, I am fucking, here, yeah. ladies. They're immediately suspicious because it's 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if anyone came to my door, when people knock at my oh door, my and I'm like, fucking don't. Don't yeah. phone me. Yeah. Don't, like, text me or send me an email, and then I'll ignore it. That's yeah. how life works. Don't come to my door. Or, like, it scares me. Like, I don't think, man, fucking everyone's like this, though. Like, girl guides have to have it so tough. Like, Girl Scouts and shit, like, trying to sell cookies. Like, oh, man, yeah. nobody answers the door. And That's it's why like, you got to set up outside the fucking weed store now. Yeah, That's yeah, That's the yeah. only That's smart business, business acumen. Move. Or get Girl Guide cookies on Skip the Dishes. Or like mm. Uber, Uber Eats or something. There you go. Because then wow. all the people that have had their weed delivered to them and had like their alcohol delivered to them will be like, in oh. the, be like, fuck, I really want some cookies. And you're like, let's see if the Girl Guides are on Skip. And then they're like, fuck. I'll, I will tip my driver $2 to bring me a box of Girl Guide fuck. cookies. But yeah, the little girl outside the weed store... That's just good business. Like, someone fucking send that girl to business school. Yeah. Fucking right? So she can teach it. Yeah, yeah. That stuff, um, you can't learn that. You learn it on the streets. Yeah, that's street knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, for this uh, cold open short really, really reminded me of The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Un- unmasked? Behind, Behind the, the mask. mask. Behind the Mask. The Rise the of whole, Leslie Vernon. The whole thing did. Yeah, but this one in particular, just the way it treated the the character of the... They're, they're having these meta discussions where they play these characters, but also horror movie scenarios are real. Yes. Like, they're not actors. They are people that are putting into play tropey shit that happens in horror movies. Like, yes. the power getting cut at the or going out at the exact right time, wrong time. Yes. Um, which I really liked. Yes. Like, I like that. Where it's not just... Because I'm, I'm back and forth on meta stuff. Um, if it's just a wink and a nod and you just keep fucking winking at me, I'm not a big fan, but when you actually do something a little bit more with it like this, or if you keep winking at me, I'm just going to think you're stroking out. Like, like make, you gotta make it work. Yeah. Like soda. I, I really enjoyed this, the cold open short. 
yes, for that. Yes, I did as well. It, it reminded me, one of my favorite bits in the uh, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, is when he's like, oh, like working out on the treadmill. And he's like, ah, I gotta, he's like, I'll be running, like going like fucking wild. And then like these girls, like they just getting away from me. I gotta make sure I'm in shape. And he's like, you know, showing everyone his like workout routine. And yeah. he's like, I pick my final girl and I put on the mask. And like, yeah, this reminded me a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought that I, I thought it was great. And his friend was like a police officer and like, she shows up and he has accidentally like killed the girls that he's been trying to help. Cause they like trip and fall and like end up stabbed and he's covered in blood and he's like, Oh no, I don't know. And then he, she arrests him and then she's like, Oh, it's just, just in time for a sequel. Wink. Mm hmm. Which I I don't know. I liked that one. I thought it was great. The whole framing device of Scare Package is Rad Chad's Horror Emporium. And there's the guy, Chad, who runs it. He's got like a Western horror knowledge guy sort of thing. He's like a Joe Bob Briggs type of guy. You might say. Yeah. The logo. Bolo and all. Bolo and all. And the logo of uh, the store is based on the last drive-in logo. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and he is arguing with his like only customer, like creepy customer, but not like a Jay and Silent Bob charming customer, like an irritating, please leave customer. <laughs> He's like Elias and clerks too. Yeah. It's a very like, well, actually kind of guy, like a, yes. like a, like a film Twitter guy. Oh, like a reply guy. He's yeah. in those replies. Well, actually everybody yeah. or just st- uh, shockingly silent over the yes. last two weeks. You know, the one. Uh, yeah. And Rad Chat is training a new employee and he's kind of like teaching him about the, the ropes and the tropes of the horror genre. And that's the framing device for this, which is really good because I thought that it was a simple enough framing device where you're like going through like, here's our monster flicks and our evil clown flicks and like zombies and you can't go in the back room and blah, 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 blah. I thought it was so simple, but it worked so well because a lot of framing devices in horror films, especially like the anthology ones can be so bad. Mm -hmm. I like when they just drop it. Yeah, oh yeah. We've halfway... watched a, yeah, we've watched a couple where like you get the intro but you don't get a bookend yeah, at yeah. the end and you're like, okay. And they're just like, fuck it. You uh, fucking I didn't think care as much as I didn't care. Veronica. Oh. I mean, yeah, that add that to its list of fucking crimes. <laughs> Veronica, Danzy, get back it's here a, and answer for your crimes. Yeah, that's a drop in the bucket <laughs> of the crimes. Of- that but that like, movie's committed. That was because it, it kind of opened with like a horror hostess, and then yeah. it was just like, uh, I don't know. Here's a woman writhing around in some blood with her boobs out. Is that is yeah. this doing it for you guys? And everyone was like, I don't know. I have a confused boner. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. But I, I like I thought that this like was really well done, and so that was directed, I believe, by Aaron Koontz, and mm-hmm. then he did the last one with the horror hypothesis. Uh, the next one we're going to chat about was Girls' Night Out of Body, directed by Courtney and Duhar and Hillary and Duhar. I'm sorry if I completely brutalized the pronunciation of your last names. That was not my intention at all. And it's about a group of girls. They're going to have a fun sleepover in a hotel that looked like it was from Portland because it had just a fucking record player in it. Which apparently is a thing where you go to Portland where all the hipsters are and the vegan food is and like voodoo donuts. Or they're mm-hmm. apparently not good, but uh, you can go and get hotels that have record players. Of course. Yeah. you're like you can... So you can buy new vinyl and then put it on the really, really cheap Crosley record player I know, and right? <laughs> rip the shit out of it. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> I spent 60 bucks on this Cannibal Oy! Holocaust gatefold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. I'll just watch it peel it up. Speaking of vinyl, do you want to know what was the most depressing thing I found out recently got released on vinyl? Mm. Guess. Um, Backstreet's Back. Uh, That would be better than this. What? The Slender Man soundtrack. Ew. You know who did the music for the Bear Slender McCrary. Man movie? No. Oh, no. It was Ramen. It's the, the Westworld Game of Thrones guy. Yes. Yeah. Was yeah, I, I knew it was someone up there yeah, that was like, "What did you do? Yeah, what happened here? Was Who this did you soundtrack money to? good? I don't. Were remember. we really drunk when we saw Slender Man? I don't remember. Huh? That'll happen. Sometimes people are like, "Did you see this movie?" And I'm like, "I think I did." Oh, I think I may, might have just like Men in Black flashy 
memory device myself after it. After Slender Man. Or maybe that's you uh, got Slender Sickness. Maybe. Mm, Slender Man can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, hotels in Portland, hipsters, these girls are having like a girls night out. They're like, we got pixie sticks and vodka. Let's have a fun night. Sleep over time. And then the one steals like a cursed lollipop from a Korean grocery store that's surrounded by like sage sticks. And then when they're all passing around one lollipop. Oh, that's and, gross me out. And licking it. Is this what? That's where coronavirus this, came yeah. from. Is this what you girls do? Is this what people do at sleepovers? Lick lollies, lick lick, the, lick a lolly. <laughs> yeah, all licking the same lollipop. Like the like those big cartoonish ones that are in like like a like a Looney Tunes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like a baby Huey mm-hmm. kind of lolly, and just like meow, meow, yeah. Meow. Um, and then they turn into like red skeletons. Then they look like red skeleton from that's a Marvel guy, right? Or is he DC? It's Marvel. Oh, okay, I was right the first time. <laughs> I know comic books. <laughs> it's the red skull. Right you know the one anyway but that's what they look like because then there's that guy who's had all the body mods done to his face to look like him yes that's what it looked like Mm -hmm. and then i did look good yes i thought that the that the uh, prosthetic actually looked quite good i just i didn't necessarily get that one like the actual point of it no i I didn't no i didn't get the trope like what were Mm. they playing with there was it like is cursed candy a thing did i fuck up somewhere and miss something maybe just like a cursed item I think. Like a needful things kind yeah. of thing? Huh. Yeah. I don't know. That one looked good. Yeah. No, it was really like, lack of a better term, candy coated. Like everything was, you yes. know, the room was bright pink and they yes. were all super colorful and. Yeah. And they had cool clothes on mm-hmm. and very nice hair. Yeah. I mean, like I, I just didn't understand the trope that that one was supposed to be. Some of them were like a little bit more obvious in terms of like the horror tropes, but I think that you might be right about like cursed items or like. Uh, the Froger is also cursed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know how it goes. Uh, this one I really liked called "The Night That He Came Back Again," Part Four, Final Kill. Yes, and that one was by Anthony Cousins, and it was like a like a Friday the Thirteenth, the burning kind of like it also reminded me of i still know what you did last summer or i know what you did last summer Mm -hmm. like it was like a group of teens and they finally like cornered the killer and they're gonna torture him and put him in a wood chipper and it's fourth of july and it's a friday night and it's a friday the 13th and it's like similar to um the first one where it's like there's a thunderstorm on halloween and i'm babysitting yeah like yeah I thought that one was really good. I'm a big fan of like the kind of like the '90s like schlocky, and I think that it was a little bit of a send up for that. Yeah. I just could be wanting to read into that because I grew up on '90s horror. I really liked that one, and that one was yeah directed by Anthony Cousins. Mm-hmm. So. I just like uh, like summer camp slasher stuff, and I like holiday themed slashers. So I do too. It hit hit the nail on the head twice. Oh, it hit it so good. Plus, it was super gory. It was super gory. You had someone get checked into a fucking wood chipper. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I was here for it like the entire time. Didn't there like a uh, there's like a car battery joke? Yes. Yes. yes there's a nipple. Yeah. Don't, nipple clamps joke. Don't. Yeah. Don't hook it up to his nipples. This isn't a porno. Mm-hmm. Which I loved it. Uh, the one after that. These are not in the correct order, by the way. Like these are just like as I was like re- remembering. So if I there's there's a hundred percent chance that that is not remembered correctly. Mm-hmm. My like, like in in sequential order. No 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 God yeah. no. My like drug addled mind is just like barely functioning. Like the two brain cells that I have left like rub together <laughs> to try to make a fire to like use friction, and then they get tired. So please bear with. I'm very old. Uh, the next one I like this one. It's called One Time in the Woods. Yes, I and think it was, this was probably my favorite. Yes, it's a Cronenberg melt movie. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's why it's my favorite is because we don't get enough melt movie stuff or enough Cronenberg stuff. Oh, uh, mm, we don't get enough melt movie stuff. Okay, fair enough. It was directed by Chris McInroy. Uh, you accused me of being David Cronenberg this morning. Did I? Yes. Oh, right. Because you wanted a living blanket. I didn't want it. I had a dream about a well, living blanket. Whatever. It was a future. You, that where means you... your brain desired it. You tried to dream it into existence. <laughs> Subconsciously. Don't dream it. Be it. If I know anything from the documentary film, the Rocky Horror Picture yeah. Show. Uh, yeah. So I had a dream about this blanket 
Because I like my cat, like, being, like, on me and feeling his warm fur, and he's, like, so cuddly, and uh, I want, I, I guess I want a blanket that feels like that, that is, like, warm, but, like, furry and, like, alive, but doesn't have, like, the claws and the asshole of a cat that can point its asshole at you. And is also flat and the size of a blanket. Yes. That is the, the that's the key part that makes this disturbing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just something flat. And so I had a dream about a blanket where it's like something out of a fucking Margaret Atwood novel where at the front of the blanket is like a like one of those like nipples that you use to inflate pool floaties like where you have a big giant taco and you ride around on it and get sunburned in your pool while you're drunk on white claw one of those but instead of it being hooked up to your mouth for air it's hooked up to like a feeding tube every now and then and then there's also a butt and you have to empty out the butt so i guess it's like a big giant colostomy bag blanket (laughs) yeah that's fucking gross (laughs) so i had a dream about this where in the future you had to like you could buy a, a blanket in a bag, but you had to make sure you were feeding it. And it was like a like a chicky knobs from fucking Oryx and Crake. Yeah, or like the controller from Existence. Yeah, yeah. That you plug in, yeah. Was Existence good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it had the bone gun. Of course it's good. Anything with a bone gun is good. I just want my fucking fuzzy, like, living blanket. Imagine having to, like, empty that out. Like, a like a like you're like, ah, oh, I got the king size. And you're like, wait a minute, and it's just a king size colostomy bag. <laughs> Okay, All moving right. on. <laughs> moving on. One time in the woods, it was like an alien melt movie. I think he was an alien. He he's like, help me! I've fallen and I can't get up, and I'm in a puddle of goo. And then people fall into him, and then he bites them, and then they become aliens, melting, and they melt together. Yeah, in like street trash style Technicolor. Yes, kind of like that body melt fashion. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like 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 a melt movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What are other good melt movies? Um Devil's Reign has a pretty good melt scene. I don't know if it counts as a melt movie though, because no, it's think not it like does. the main f- thrust of it. Um Ooh. What else is a good melt movie? Uh what's the one with uh Ricky from the Hobo with a Shotgun? Is that a melt movie? Um kind of. Is it? Because it's got Ricky from the Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, but who melts? I don't know. I thought it was a movie that melts. No, Society, I think, counts. As a melt movie? Isn't well, people that... melt together. Yeah, that's where people have faces in their butts. Mm-hmm. That's like a good, the, the, well, yeah, I was going to say that's like a David Cronenberg thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to get to the level of street trash. I mean, that's really the, street that's the tra- high point. The, the incredible melting, man. What about Biocop? Yes. Biocop, the short. Yes. Yes. Nothing gets you high like drugs. Fucking ugh, precious gifts. Okay. And the one after that, which was directed by Noah Sagan, who's in Ryan Johnson movies. He was in Knives Out, and he was in another movie that I really like uh, called Mohawk. We talked about it a couple episodes mm-hmm. back on the Drunk and Graveyard podcast. Uh, directed by Ted Jogahan. Jogahan. Jogan. I am so sorry for mispronouncing your last just name. Everyone's name. I don't know. It's just like it's like a it's like a Robin doing a speaking spell on you. You just gotta go like first names only and just pretend everyone is your best friend. First name, last initial. Yeah. Ted G with the movie that was written by Ted G and Grady Hendrix. See, I can pronounce his name. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh called Mohawk. A great film. If you haven't seen it, it's a twenty seventeen one. Uh and he played Yancey. I believe he was like the sexy interpreter. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he directed one. It's called M-I-S-T-E-R. And it's about a guy who's like sad because his wife's like overbearing. And so he goes to the bar to get drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning, which we've all been there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it happens. Uh, PAX. I was just going to say, we bought pa- or we bought beer at like 9 a.m. at PAX. Yeah. From a drugstore. Yeah. Yeah. The people in Seattle really, I don't know if they're into PAX. Mm. I mean, I'm sure it brings lots of money, but it also brings lots of grossness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he goes to a bar and he's all like, hey, can I get a bunch of booze? And the bartender's like, yep. And then when he's in the bathroom, like pissing as you do, he's reading the like things on the wall and it's like support group for men to be men for him. It just reads like a fucking incel. Yeah. Recruitment poster yeah so he shows up to this like support group to learn how to like or be men's a... rights i guess to be more technical technically accurate yes yeah so he shows up to this group and it's like four men 
and they're all like bitching and then they're like let's go out into the fucking uh, the middle of a football field and then they start turning into werewolves and then he was like hey, hey i kill werewolves kablamo mm-hmm. and i, I that's not, it i'm not really sure what the trope that was being played i, I think there. it was just werewolves i think it was like also making let's make fun of incels yeah yeah. Which, that's like shooting fish in a barrel. It really is. But I enjoy it. So let's do it. Yeah, you're not wrong. Keep yeah. shooting those fish. That guy's like really good looking too. So I was... I'm here you're for fine it, with honestly. it, Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he like directed that one. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that he uh, was a sensuous actor and also a, a director guy. Sensuous director? Yeah, yeah. And also a werewolf hunter. If mm. The documentary Mr from the also documentary scare package is anything to go by uh fucking men's rights activists are dumb anyways let's go on to the end one which is called horror hypothesis directed by aaron b coons he's a fucking chill dude and this one is like a nightmare on elm street three kind of vibe yeah um it's kind of got that cabin in the woods sort of vibe and some of that uh uh behind the mask rise of leslie vernon going to so sort of like there's like a like an institute that's like training like a super soldier serial killer kind of guy and he sort of looks like michael and sort of looks like jason and sort of looks like freddie ellen mm-hmm. he's like a group. little like a hodgepodge of slashers <laughs> i was gonna say second. potpourri that was the other word I was looking for. Neither of those really make sense, but no. Well, hodgepodge makes more sense than, than potpourri. Because, like, for a second though, my brain was just like, "Did you just say modpodge? <laughs> Are you like cutting up fucking articles out of magazines <laughs> and like putting it on like a box? This is my cannabis box. It's got right? pictures of weed on it. It's the fucking sixties up in this piece. I mean, uh, yeah. you do smoke a lot of cannabis and you have dreadlocks, so if the shoe fits. Anyway, I said hodgepodge. You're just up here <laughs> in the office. Like, you've got your fucking record player on. You're listening to, like, <laughs> Incense and Peppermints. Yeah, that's what I listen to. <laughs> like, the, the 11-minute DSVM cover of that. Mm-hmm. You know how it is. So, this, this one is very much making fun of, like, the slasher tropes yeah but this time instead of having like uh only the serial killer on a treadmill it also has like the girl on a treadmill and she's like (laughs) and uh she falls down a lot yeah you should mention that this brings in the bookend characters from the the video rental store rad chad yeah they are characters in this yes and he's like we're in a horror movie Mm -hmm. because he gets to play the horror expert yes which is that a trope I guess because he's like, yeah. they question that. And then he's like, yeah, I'm like stew and scream. Yeah. I'll like, be right back. I guess I guess you can just like add, we can add tropes. We're adding a trope. The horror so, expert? Yeah. Because if we were in a horror movie, we would be the horror expert and probably the stoners and then we would die. Yeah. Or we would live. Because in Cabin in the Woods, doesn't the stoner live? I think so. Yeah. That's the twist in that one. Because he's the fool. Yeah. Or whatever. I remember the movie. I just didn't like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I did like his coffee cup bong, though. That was we the best part of the movie. We all like the coffee cup bong. Yeah. Also, that actor is just good because he was in that fucked up show that we liked, Dollhouse, which I also think was done by Josh Whedon. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that one was good because that was like a like a precursor to like the TV series Westworld. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, they weren't robots, though, but it was like, let me men in black flashy thing you and then yeah. like four or five other guys will bang you. Yes. You know how it goes. This one had, like, a big twist. So, again, if you have not seen this and you are intending to see it, this and is you our made third, it this far. This is our third spoiler warning. This is our final spoiler warning. Please skip ahead if you don't want this ruined for you. They're like, wee wee We need, like, a spoiler alarm that will sound. Really do. Like, wee 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 Because, like, don't accuse me of spoiling shit. The fucking spoiler embargo only goes so far. Anyways, this one for, like, the guy who saves the day is uh, Joe Bob Briggs himself. It sure is. Mm-hmm. Cowboy hat and all. Yeah. He was like he was like being like a like a sarcastic guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to explain to Rigby yesterday who Joe Bob Briggs was, and she was just like, who is that guy? And I yeah. was just like, oh, God. How do I even, like, like pop it fucking... It's Elvira with a bolo tie, no boobs. It's grumpy Elvira. Grumpy Elvira. <laughs> with no boobs. 
<laughs> but she was like, I like, what is that? And I was like, he's been around for like for fucking ever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you never watched Monster Vision when you were younger? And she was like, huh? But I mean, maybe we can't all be poets like I was and am watching Monster Vision. No. But yeah, that was kind of like the big reveal. One thing that I was really kind of glad with is that um, he was sort of the deus ex machina, but then immediately died. Yeah. It wasn't like he got to like be the hero or whatever, mm-hmm. which I kind of thought it was going to go that way when he showed up. I was like, oh, shit, here we are. Um, but that doesn't happen. Um, I did like the way that it ended. It has like a kind of like a vhs sort of vibe to it. Like yeah. All the tapes going into the the VCR as part of like the the framing device I liked. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about what we liked. So I liked the framing device. I liked how funny it was. I liked that it was funny all throughout. Uh, I liked the Rad Chad's like bolo tie. I liked his whole outfit. I liked the movie store. Which was just Vulcan video, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I liked it all. Yeah. I was here for all of it. I think it was just fun. That's another thing with like a lot of uh, anthologies is that they can seem like a chore. Yes. And if it seems like you guys were doing a chore to make it, it is laborious to watch, my friends. Mm-hmm. This just looked like everyone was just having a fucking good time. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was definitely like a, definitely a more fun, have some drinks kind of anthology. Yes. Which I think we need more of yes. now. I feel like we also missed a segment. We missed the like mage one. Yes. Fuck. We done fucked up. That was directed by Baron Vaughn. Yes. And he's a comedian. And fuck, what was that one called? So much to do. Yep. And it was, it had the haunted fog in it, did it not? Yes. Yeah. And that was, again, a a trope of like misty haunted fog things. Mm -hmm. Things coming out of said fog. And it had like a, like a synth wave 1980s. And that was almost like a trope of like now where everything is like synth wave. Yeah. Right. I liked it. Yeah. How did I miss that? I had my notes and it's on here and I just fucking, I don't know. My brain no work. I was thinking about bolo ties. I was thinking about bolo ties and then we got off talking about like boobies and then like again, the two brain cells that I have, like they just don't friggin' work. <laughs> like I'm rubbing them together, like to try to make fire. There's Sometimes nothing. like there's not even smoke because the rest of my brain is just like, whoop, gone. Anyways, do we have any dislikes? Um, not really. I mean, it's... Ooh, I have one. Okay, what was it? I have it? one. I'm going to put it on my hand. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the last one in Horror Hypothesis, there was a joke that reminded me of the joke in Family Guy where Peter falls down and like holds his knee and is like, ah, ah, and it goes on for too long. Yeah. And that's when the girl is like falling down on the treadmill. Mm. She falls down like five times in a row. And it's like the first time was really funny. The second time, somewhat funny. And then after that, I was like, we get it. Mm-hmm. We got the trope. But that that isn't really like, that's just not my type of humor. Yeah. It's not like some like glaring, terrible error. But not like me completely missing that like <laughs> fucking segment. Oh, God. What a dumbass. Anyways. So on a scale of zero to six, possibly even negatives of all the way up to six. Six, six, the number of the beast. Yeah. Uh, what do we give scare package? Um, give it like a five out of six. I mean, I think there's something there for pretty much anyone. Yeah. I'm going to give it a solid five out of six too. Yeah. I think it was like just super fun. I don't know. It was like a fun, you could like have a couple drinks do some drugs if that's i'm not telling you to do them that's your thing i'm not telling you to do them i'm just saying that that you could get some government approved cannabis yeah pop a fucking edible and see what happens where that takes you Uh, you might just end up confused but that's not that's that's here or there that's anthology films (laughs) yeah um i chuckled the entire time through like i was just like i get it like yeah it was lighthearted. yes um and it didn't the tropes weren't the tropes and the winks and the nods weren't always the most obvious ones that get made, which is something I appreciated yes. because it, yeah, like it wasn't completely surface level. They yes. were very obvious, but they were still, yes, required a little bit of thinking. I agree. So, yeah, I think it's five out of six. 
pretty good. I liked it. It was it was great. You guys did a great job. I look forward like make more because a lot of the anthologies aren't great. And some of them are laborious to watch. Yeah. Some of them like have really good ones that like stick out so much as being so good and then like are just bookended by like real tough stuff. Real tough. Mm-hmm. But you know what? They can't all be winners, can they, Scott? Not always. Mm-mm. So now we're going to talk about Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. It came out September 30th, 1988. I was two years old when this came out. It was just re-released. It got the Arrow Blu-ray treatment. A gorgeous release from Arrow. All their stuff is always, like, gorgeous. And I think the same month that it came out, they also did 16 Candles. Yeah. Which Lonely. I'm sure we will be talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's not really I a I can put on movie. a little white dress and... What is this like for your quinceanera? Well, yeah, because that's one where they're like, oh, we're the daughters. And then they finger bang on the football field, right? What? What movie am I thinking of? I don't know. I, they, I think you might be thinking of this one. Where they're like, is it sisters? It's like sisters. Like uh... three sisters and people are after them. Not like after them, but they're like a group of boys wants to date them and they lust over them. Am I thinking of... What am I thinking of? Um... I know I'm thinking of a fucking movie that exists. It's a John Hughes this is movie. A, no, this is a John Hughes movie. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, this is like is a young girl and she's got like an older sister and she's all pissed off because her family isn't making a big deal about her sweet 16 because her sister's, I think, like getting married or something. And then there's like cute boys in it. It's got like Molly Ringwald. It's like every fucking John yeah, Hughes it's like, movie. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds like every fucking John Hughes movie. This is going <laughs> to bother me. Well, because you're, like, thinking of, like, people getting finger-banged on the football field. Are you thinking of the Virgin Suicides? I am. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> what See? The, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I i don't know what I'm thinking of. It might be a Jeffrey Eugenitas book, or it might be fucking a John Hughes movie. Ow. Maybe those aren't similar things. Hmm. I don't think so, because the Virgin Suicides is, like, And I have like, no idea what 16 Candles and- is about. I don't think I've ever seen it because I thought it was. I thought that was the movie. <laughs> I don't. Think, oh no! I don't think that it's super common for people to kill themselves in John Hughes movies. Oh, what no. the fuck? Ugh. Oh my god, Scott! Yikes! <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I did think about? that was a weird like turn in his career, but I don't know. Yeah, you remember that John Hughes movie where all the main characters kill themselves? <laughs> That's, Oops. That's my personal favorite. Yeah. Holy shit, Scott. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about <laughs> Elvira and hide my shame. <laughs> I mean, can we now? Holy guacamole. Anyway, so it was directed by James uh, Signorelli. Uh, he's not really known for directing films, but he has directed over 400 episodes of Saturday Night Live since 1976. So quite prolific. I wonder if he directed any of my favorites, the ones with Sean Spicer. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> God, those episodes were so good. Can we go back in time to when, like, that was the Trump administration? When and, it was like, funny and not just fucking... When it was funny and not, like... The mask wasn't off? Yeah, when America wasn't burning down around us? Christ. Oh, I saw a tweet that was like, the writing room for 2020 is out of control. You don't put a pandemic plot and murder hornets and fucking race riots all together. Like, it's it's too much. Like, I'm on overload. Anyways, that's why I'm watching Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. So this was her uh, film debut. Yeah. She'd been doing the Elvira's, like, B-movie. Like, hosting. Yes. Every week. It's a real horror host-heavy episode. Yes. It's horror host and horror comedy. Why doesn't Elvira have a show? Make someone give it to her, Scott. Like, oh my god. Anyways, so... Let's talk about the plot of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, which if you haven't, I'm not giving you a spoiler warning for this. It's like a 35-year-old fucking spoiler warning is not <laughs> happening on this show, so <laughs> fuck all y'all. Uh, so I guess you kind of did by not giving one, by saying you wouldn't give one. Fuck the police and fuck spoiler warnings. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Elvira's getting like sexually harassed at her job, which is like... like, like Topical. A- <laughs> mm. Wow. Everything in, yeah. in Mistress of the Dark was topical. Like yeah, topical to the horror community right now. Yeah, conservatives being pieces of shit. Oh, fuck. Mm. 
beep beep boop um yeah and she's like fuck you you fascist pig dog quit sexually harassing me he tries to like honk her tit does he not yeah and, oh he tries to like get her to essentially be a hooker for some like texan yeah with like a 10 gallon hat that's like i'd like to get me some of them things and she's like no so she quits her job and then her agent is trying to set her up with a gig in las vegas but it's one of those pay to play gigs yeah uh where they're like we need 50 grand to set up the show and she's like i don't have that much money but then she finds out that her aunt morgana in falwell massachusetts has Would- died and left her her estate or has, she's left her something in the will so she needs to go to the will reading so she like saddles up her her the fucking... macabre mobile, yes. I believe, is what Elvira calls her car. It is a fucking. Does she actually own that car? Yes, she still like a- allegedly drives it to events when she does fucking events, like if possible. I would shit my fucking pants if so I she saw fucking that. drove up. Yeah, no kidding. I would okay. I would just straight up shit my pants if I met Elvira. I would probably like cry. I'm not. I do not get like starstruck by people. Uh, but I think I would just like, yeah, shit on the ground, possibly in my pants. I don't know. Uh, and if I saw that car, I'd be like, Oh, can I just like touch it? <laughs> I don't know. Does she it's have a... the dog though? The dog's probably dead. Yeah. I don't think poodles live for that long. No, not 35 years. That'd be a really shitty looking yeah, poodle. It'd be rough. <laughs> have you seen that cat that's 30 years old? Yeah. It looks like it's made of dust. It's yeah. like, <laughs> It's like, uh, should have died 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Keeping me alive. Yeah, that cat got like, instead of what is it, cats have nine lives, it got nine times nine lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It hates its life. It doesn't even know where it is, I don't think. It's like completely blind. <laughs> Anyways, so she goes to Falwell, Massachusetts for the will reading. On the way there, she's like, I'm going to get a hot dog. And then you get... I could watch Elvira eat a hot dog all day long. And then she like drops the wiener on her boobs and gets like oh, yes. mustard like, and relish like on I her said, boobs. A lot of classic boob humor. Boobs are great. Boobs and butts. Yeah. I love it. And Elvira has both and provides both kinds of jokes. I also like like she has kind of like this like it's almost like a like a hippie sort of kind of vibe to her she's like oh come on man like yeah yeah and uh like real rock and roll and all the music that's always like around elvira is like kind of like punk rock Mm -hmm. metal music of like the 80s and stuff which i just i love it so much so follow massachusetts is like a shitty shit town full of conservatives yeah it's it's like your every town usa small town like summer teen comedy which this is just like a summer teen comedy we've got a save the theater at one point and you've got your like legion of gaggling like the boys who are after her yeah you just in they're after the girl and they've just dropped spooky elvira in the middle of it absolutely which totally works and i love it yes like when they're painting her house and she's like got her like fucking like clam digger pants on and like it's just a close-up of her butt and then there's like 16 boys like just staring at her oh, yeah ass. like your your classic totally not hip with times fucking trope of like one kid's hustling it and he's got all the neighborhood kids like paying him like five bucks to help paint the house so they can stare at her butt yeah yeah which is very 80s and not right now but it was the 80s yeah but i mean like i feel like as problematic as some of that stuff could be if you were to do it now i feel like this was done with like a feminist bent to it because i feel like the whole character of elvira is inherently feminist she quits oh, yeah. a job because she's not going to get sexually harassed oh 100 plus it's it's sending up again the tropes of teen summer comedies yes. so that's yeah. that's what happens well and elvira is the one who's like making all of the boob jokes about herself mm-hmm. and it like owns the boob jokes like yeah. fucking i have a pin from like the 1990s and it's like elvira's haunted hills and it's just her boobs well yeah i mean her i think her simpsons equivalent is booberella <laughs> yes it like, is. so yeah <laughs> she's just like boobs yeah. <laughs> <Boo-ber-ella>. <laughs> that's such a great name that's gonna be my porn name if i ever do porn i'm not going to because no one wants to fucking see that but that's gonna be my porn be name. my porn name yeah absolutely it's you can like dick, stuff you can decorella st- Ooh, no one wants that dongarella there you go dongzilla yeah yeah, and then, like, your finishing move can be, like, shooting, like, nuclear waste out of your wiener. Yuck. 
Well, that's what Godzilla does, doesn't he? You can be like the Godzilla that's in Shin Godzilla that doesn't have any arms. Neat. Ah, it's me. I have no arms. Just push myself around with my feet. With that's your great. face, yeah. like he was doing. Yeah. Because you can just get in one of those like fetish suits, like the sausage casing, and it'll like put your arms to your side. Can we talk about Elvira, please? <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, so they go to this town. It's very conservative and boring and, like, apple pie and Jesus and all that stuff. And, like, Elvira is, like, the troublemaker. Oh, yeah, cruising down Main Street in her black convertible. Yes. Uh, what did it, what, macabre mobile? Yes. Yeah, to, like, metal. Mm-hmm. And then breaks down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's like, help. And then uh, her Help uncle- me, sexy local man with muscles. Oh yeah, he's a he's a Chad. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a hundred percent certain that he was straight. However, no, no, but, like a gorgeous man like that. Oof, ladies and the boys. But yeah, she they go to her will reading, and her like uncle Vincent is like trying to get like the fucking spell book because her aunt great aunt Morgana was a witch, and her What's a, they refer to it as a recipe book. Yeah, and he wants that because it's a spell book, and he's a warlock, and he wants to like become the master of the night yeah master he's like a dark. um bring it back to what i mentioned earlier kind of reminds me of uh ernest borgnine's character in the devil's reign yes like that's the vibe that i got off him yes not as fabulous as the warlock from the titular film warlock no not mm. eating skin no no or uh boiling uh virgins to get their yeah flesh skin, whatever something with skin virgins yeah, that actually ended up, like, inspiring a crime that happened in Canada, though. Yeah, it did. Where a guy, like, killed a little kid and then was boiling his yeah. fucking guts to make stuff like that. Because he saw a warlock too many times. Troubling! Anywho, let's talk about Elvira's boobies. So, uh, Elvira gets left the house, the recipe book, and her poodle Algonquin, which Elvira renames Gonk. Yeah. And, and then gives him, him like, a haircut. Like a punk rock poodle haircut, yeah. which is super cute. And she's like, I'll sell you the book for 50 bucks. And the uncle's like, cool, let's get it. And then, like, the dog hides it because she has no idea what it is. And then as, like, the movie progresses, she realizes that there's something different about her. And she's a witch. And she's, like, the master of, like, the dark arts. And she gets in touch with, like, that local theater guy. And she's like, how about we do a screening of a bad movie? And yeah, because I'll he needs host to... it. Yeah, why do they like do the it? The theater's closing because all yeah, they can show yeah. is G-rated movies. Right, yeah. Nobody wants to see G-rated movies. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, G-rated movies are fine if there's lots of sex and violence. Which <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. Um, I then... think, you know what? I think, though, I think Watership Down's rated G. And that movie's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, but nobody wants to see it because it's a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that the movie that they choose is... Uh, fucking attack, attack of the killer tomatoes yeah. which is like one of the first horror movies i ever fucking saw yeah which is great and she's commentating on it and she's just like this movie's bad and then she's gonna do like a flash dance mm-hmm. kind of okay. like spoof so, so the i'm just gonna throw this out here maybe i'm old but the conservatives in this town are very like she's corrupting our children because the kids are all very interested in her because she's fucking badass. Yes, and they're the ones who go to this midnight screening that yes. she hosts. So maybe they have a little bit of a point if she's going to do a weird flash dance strip show. Yes, for the children. Yes, because it was like it was like a she was, uh, she was clothed, but it was like a burlesque performance, and I don't know that burlesque is for all ages. Yes. I was just like, we were sitting there watching it, and I was like... Hmm, maybe they hmm, have a point. <laughs> maybe Chastity has a point. Yeah, yeah what was her? The, chastity, chastity Martyr? Chastity Pariah. Yeah. Yes. Is the leader of, like, the Falwell... Uh, what is it? Like, the... Puritanical, Puritanical Society something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Morals Ethics Council or yeah. whatever. And, yeah, so she does, like, this, like, flash dance routine, and then, like, the woman who, like, runs the bowling alley, which is, I guess, supposed to be, like, the resident, like, hot lady slut or whatever... She has, like, big, like, pointed boobies, and she's all mad. <laughs> like Madonna cones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's all mad that Elvira's, like, got bigger boobies, and it's like, mmm, shall not pass. I have to be the booby queen in town. And then she does, like, a carry and switches out the glitter from Elvira's flash dance routine, and then it just, she tars and feathers her instead. Yeah. 
And then Elvira has to take a bath and like gas to get the tar off. And then he's like, what kind of perfume are you wearing? And she's like, unleaded. The humor in this is fucking like, ba- like bang on. I love it. Like, yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Elvira learns that she's a witch. She uses the recipe book to like make some food, like this horrible casserole. And she's like, I have a cast iron stomach. <laughs> and then like summons like this horrible like creature the ghostbusters looking yes. fucking creature yeah. but it was all practical and it looked really good it was an 88 of course it was practical there's bad cgi in movies from the 80s is there yes like where it's like like drawn on like this like the cells mm, yeah true that's true i guess that's not cgi but it's still like there's definitely like, like visual yes yeah Speaking yeah of bad cgi let's talk about free willy no it's not <laughs> Um. Yeah. Then she's like, "I'm a witch," and then uses like she makes a casserole and takes it to like the Pariah Society's fucking puritanical brunch, and then they all like start taking their clothes off and fucking and humping, and then like Chastity Pariah is like, "Ooh, is this seat taken?" And then just sits on a guy's face. Oh yes, that, adult situations. Absolutely, I loved it. It reminded me of like a John Waters film. Yeah, I loved it. it was so good. I mean, less shit eating than a john waters film well but. no one we can't all be poets like john waters can it's we? true uh then the town is like huh she's in in charge of magic so we should burn her at the stake because it's massachusetts and what with salem being there and all yeah that. still they do like do burning it. people they do and then they try to burn her at the stake and Uncle Vincent shows up, and he's all like, "I am a warlock." And yeah, I he's in book. like, yeah, he's in full Ernest Borgnine mode at that point, oh, like, yeah. like hood, like just looking crazy. He's got, like, weird prosthetics on his face. Yeah, too. it kind of reminded me of uh, I don't the know. fuck was it the witch from uh, witches, like Angelica Houston's. Character. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, not that extreme, but no, no, like the yeah, they just had he looked much more warlock like. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yes. And then they kind of like duke it out over magical things. Like she has like the magic power in her ring and she's like, oh, I have to like. Yeah. because She learns that she is the mistress of the dark, not just a spooky lady. Yeah. That's why I'm different. I always knew I was different. And then she like defeats her uncle and sends him to the underworld. And then the house gets burned down and then like the magic book goes with it. Like all everything inside the house, like is totally trashed. And then when she's getting ready to leave the town, the townspeople come and say that they're sorry and they offer to help like fix up the house and like bring things for her. And, uh, then the lawyer, lawyer, Larry T lawyer shows up and is like, you've inherited your uncle's estate because you're his only living relative. So she gets enough money to be able to go to Vegas. And then she does like a sexy Vegas show. Mm -hmm. That's like super like high production. And it's got, like, really sexy hot men, like, and she's got her, like, big spider outfit, and, like, she's got uh, spider nipple tassels, which oh, yeah. we all love. Who doesn't? Was Elvira just, like, a burlesque performer? I think she was a showgirl when she first started. Was she? Yeah, okay. she was a Vegas showgirl, so that's why. The yeah. look. I think, I know that when she was, like, younger, she was, like, a go-go dancer at, like, mm-hmm. gay bars and stuff, yeah. so. God, I just love Cassandra Peterson. She's just, like, so... She's just such a gal, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I just, I think that she, she's so beautiful, and someone, and she gets it. Yes, she's not stuck in, in the fucking past, which no, is but great. I think, she, I think she got it at the time too. Oh yeah, no, she's always been progressive. Yeah, very forward thinking, and like, someone please give her a fucking show. Right, this looked great. This release just fucking arrow slated as usual. The actual artwork for the physical release, like when we get screeners from Arrow, we just get like a disc, which no shade. I'm totally happy with that. But the actual artwork on it, oh, looks so good. Just given the arrow treatment, I know that there is some bonus features in there. I think there's like a big interview with her and a couple other things. So definitely worth the admission price. If you're an Elvira fan, even if you aren't, I definitely recommend checking this out. It has been so lovingly restored. Mm -hmm. This would be a good, like, I don't know anything about Elvira. Totally. Kind of intro. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. You can move on to the plethora of things that she hosted and oh, released yeah. on VHS and DVD. Totally. Yeah. I Someone give her a show. With all these like horror hosts, like got like Joe Bob Briggs, like doing his thing. Um, I'm not sure if they've announced him for like a new season of the last drive in. I'm sure we'll find out this week. 
Yeah. Yeah, because I think this one is their last. Not this one that just passed, but I think the one that's coming up is like their last yeah. one. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah. Uh, I just loved um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. It was like everything that I wanted in a movie. And because of that, uh, I don't have any dislikes for it. I liked everything. And my graveyard rating, on a scale of six, this one's getting a six. Oh, yeah, a six for me, too. Yeah, this is a confirmed graveyard smash. No graveyard trash here this week. We give you guys some good stuff. This is like, um, I love horror and comedy. Mm-hmm. I love like the hilarious House of Frankenstein. I love like the. I think that horror is like inherently silly. Yes, uh, most of the time. Yes, unless you're like an Ari Aster type. But then, then that's then we're not purpose- that. Then, then that's purposefully depressing, and I love that too. Yes, but yes, I think like. Your generic, like, tropey stuff, like your yes. slashers and your big monsters. Like, oh, gigantic absolutely. creatures and stuff. Yeah, your kaiju films and stuff. is It's inherently silly. And I think that this was, like, a nice... I know that everything that's been going on in the world has been really heavy lately. And that's to put it very fucking bluntly. Uh, and very lightly, yeah. actually. Like, everything has been so crazy. And there's been so much strife and controversy. Uh, we have a pandemic. We have, like race riots um i don't even know if they're riots protests like yeah police brutality police protests. brutality protests uh people getting murdered in broad daylight on camera and all on top of this with like a pandemic and everyone's mental health is really bad and there's so much controversy that's come out with people getting exposed in the horror community on twitter and it seems sometimes when i log on to twitter that like the horror community is just like one stitch away from being torn asunder and we thought that this week we would give you guys something a little bit lighter, a little happier, uh, something that we can all laugh about. Because I know when I'm feeling sad, one of the only things that makes me feel better, this is like an old Irish proverb, is like a good drink and a long sleep and a good laugh. And I think we all need that right now. So I hope you guys will check these out. Scare Package, like I said, comes out on Shutter this Thursday, June 18th. I think you can go watch it now, though, with uh, the last drive-in. Nope. It was live only. Oh, it was live only. Live only. Oh, okay, okay. So I guess you're SOL until, until Thursday. Until Thursday. But I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, thank you to Shudder for sending that over to us. We love you guys. And thank you as well to our friends at Arrow for sending us this Elvira film. So good. And we're going to check out 16 Candles, which is not the Virgin <laughs> Suicide. <sighs> Fucking This Christ. is going to be great. I've never seen this movie then. <laughs> oh, shit. Hmm. Oh, my God. Have you seen Pretty in Pink? Yes. Okay. I've seen Pretty in Pink. Okay. I was just checking. Yeah. I just had to check. Okay. But I think that's going to take us to the end of this episode. Please stay tuned over on our Patreon. We're going to be doing something else that's going to make people laugh. Uh, I'm going to be reading some Michael Madsen poetry. <laughs> like, not Michael Madsen. Not not like poetry about the man. Poetry written by the man. Yes. See, so it's whiskey soaked. It smells like a cigarette butt. It's got wrinkles. Yeah, oh yeah. We are on like a real Michael Madsen kick lately. We uh, nah, no, we... no, that's my life. That's that's you're just describing my life it's, and my life. Yes, more your life. Yes, because we recently rewatched Free Willy and Michael Madsen's <laughs> the dad in that, and holy fuck, guacamole. that is Fuck-y when he so could have. <sighs> he could have fucking blown up. Yeah, he, he was he was a handsome man. He still is. Touche. Just I, saying. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to be doing some Michael Madsen poetry over on the Patreon. Our Patreon has been like woefully unupdated, so apologies for that. Uh, be sure to check us out on all of our social media. On Twitter, we are Drunk Graveyard. On Instagram and Facebook, we are Drunk in a Graveyard. You can check us out online, drunkinagraveyard.com. Follow us over on YouTube. We've been updating, I think, a little bit more frequently over on YouTube and definitely more frequently on Twitch, which is twitch.tv forward slash Drunk in a Graveyard. You can watch me play video games and scream and yell at them because I am not good at video games that is just i'm not great at video games but you're fun to watch yeah 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 oh it's very entertaining to watch but it's like it's a charming in a stupid way plus Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i i feel like your video game selections are not the like standard stuff you're playing like saw on an old console and like i know someone, which is shit that people don't play no so. no someone came into my stream the there's other a, day. i mean there's a reason they don't play it yeah, but yeah. somebody's got to do it someone came to my stream the other day and i was playing like the alice game and they were just like oh you just have to use this hotkey and i was like i'm playing this on like a console and they were like what 
And I was like, yeah, I'm playing this on PlayStation 3. And they were like, but why? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Fucking party till you puke. We're getting it up in old school. Because they thought I was like playing PC games. I was like, no, no, no. I'm a console pleb. How dare you? Mm -hmm. But possibly not for long. Anyways, that's going to take us to the end for this episode. So thank you guys for sticking around. Any retweets uh, are appreciated. And if you have any questions, any suggestions for future things that we should check out, uh, you know how to reach me. Send them my way. My DMs are open. And uh, goodbye. Always stay spooky.